So once again, I apologize for the long delay in releasing a new part to this tutorial series. I was busy doing a bunch of other stuff and hence the delay. And I don't think I can give a fixed timeline as to when a new part to this tutorial series is going to be released. But I can say that we are getting close to finishing this. So hopefully soon. So coming back to the video. In this video, we are going to create a game over screen that displays both the distance covered and the coins collected. And we are also going to display the total number of coins collected and the longest distance that the player have covered in a single run. So the first thing that I am going to do is that I am going to go to the content browser over here and under blueprints, I am going to create a new blueprint class and then search for save game. So this save game blueprint class over here is the one that we are going to use to save the total number of coins and the longest distance that we have covered. So click on this save game and I'm going to name this as save g distance and coins. I'm just shortening it as dist. You can just name whatever you want in this. So double click on it and in here under variables I'm going to click on the plus icon and type total coins and then change the variable type to integer similarly click on the plus icon over here and type long dist again this means longest distance and this is the variable that we are going to use for comparison later on so that is why i named it like this you can give a more suitable name if you want so over in here once we are done that I'm going to go to the BP third person character over here and then I'm just going to quickly shift the position of all these comment sections over here. Again it's very important to try organizing your code as much as you can because a messy code can be very very difficult to handle later on since our code base is becoming more and more complex over time. So I'm just going to move this over here. And then I'm just going to click on this bubble when zoomed option over here. And this is so that we can actually easily see what each of these comments actually are. Even when you zoom them out, you don't need to keep zooming them in over here to see what these groups of nodes over here do. So there we go. I just made all the comments over here. So now it's easier to understand what's going on over here. It doesn't look like a bunch of nodes over here just randomly staying here and there. And again, it's very important you do this for every blueprint because again, with each part of this tutorial series, our code base is getting larger and larger. And this is going to be very difficult if you want to refactor or perform any kind of modification to this game later on. So yeah, over here in player death, we need to make a couple of changes over here. So the first thing is that I'm going to move these code towards the side over here. Just drag them away a bit. And then I'm going to drag and create a branch node. Connect it from the false and remove the truth in over here. And then drag the east dead condition. We're going to get the value and connect this to the branch node over here. And the reason why we are doing this is because there is a bug in our game where after our player dies, the player death event over here keeps getting cold even after a player already dies. And the spawn emitter keeps on spawning at that location repeatedly. And that is happening because our player, when it actually dies, we are simply setting the visibility of the player to false. And that means it's no longer visible in the game. But that doesn't mean the player actually is destroyed. And because of that, the player collider keeps hitting on the obstacle. For example, the laser obstacle we made in the previous part keeps hitting on the collider of the player. And that keeps calling the player death event over here repeatedly. So this branch over here is going to check whether our player is already dead or not. So if our player is already dead, we don't need the player to keep on dying again. So if the east dead is true, this branch will not execute because our player is already dead. This event must be already called by then. And that is why we set the east dead to true over here. After that, 
I'm going to move this towards the side. In the left side, over here, you can see we have something called Event Dispatcher. So I'm just going to click on the plus icon over here. And I'm going to call this Save and Load Dispatcher. I'm just going to drag this over here and select the Call option. And then connect the execution pin to the Save and Load Dispatcher over here. So the reason why we are using this dispatcher over here is because we are going to use this dispatcher to call an event from another blueprint. And I'm going to show you how that works in a minute. But yeah, the event dispatchers are very useful and important to know. You can call multiple custom events all at once simultaneously by just using this simple event dispatcher. I'm going to remove this open level by new name over here and then I'm going to go to the content browser over here and then right click go to user interface and select widget blueprint so I'm going to click on user widget over here and I'm going to call this game over blueprint widget double click on it and in here we're just going to quickly create a very basic game over screen so search for canvas panel drag this over here then click on this arrow icon over here so setting this as 1920 by 1080 and after that i'm going to drag a border over here in the details panel click on the anchor and hold the shift and control key to set the alignment and position of this container widget in the center after that simply drag this border and make sure it covers the entire screen it is better if the border crosses the canvas panel over here and after that in the details panel go to the brush color and set the alpha to something like 0.3 or something and then i'm going to drag a text panel over here and make sure that the text is a child of the canvas panel and not the border so I'm going to click on this anchor over here, Control Shift, and change the name to something like Game Over. And that's it. This is just a demo, just to see that the Game Over screen is being displayed or not. Compile and save. And with that, we are going to return back to the third person character blueprint. And I'm going to drag from here and search for Create Widget. So I'm going to create the game over widget when the player dies so in the select class over here select game over vpv and add that to the viewport and after that i'm going to drag the execution pin from here and search for set game post and i'm going to set this to true so the game will pause when the player will die after a delay of around three seconds and then I'm simply going to go to the content browser, go to the game UI, BPV, go to graph, and in here, I'm simply going to copy this section over here. Again, if you watched the previous part of this tutorial series, you already know what this does. Just paste it over here and connect the execution pin. And yeah, that's about it. Compile and let's try the game out and there the game over screen has shown up over here so this means that everything is working as intended so now i'm going to go back to the game over blueprint widget move the game over text over here and after that i'm going to increase the scaling of this thing over here so you can go to the details panel click on this font over here which is under appearance and then change or increase the size so i'm going to give it a value of 60 set the x position as zero and now it's at the center now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add two buttons over here so one button again kind of have to make sure that the button is a child of the canvas panel so I need two buttons, so both of them will be the child of the canvas panel. 
and then I'm going to add text to both of these buttons. So again, it's the same thing that we have done in the previous tutorials. I'm going to set the alignment and position towards the sides for each button. So this one will be over here and this button over here will be on the right side and adjust the position for each of these buttons. All right, just like that. And then in the text box, I'm going to increase the size of these text to like 35 so that it's more readable for the players and then adjust the position or the size of the button to the text. Rename this one as retry and the other one as quit. And then I'm going to rename the individual buttons as retry and quit so that it's easier to understand which button does what and after that i'm going to add two more text over here you can also hide the widget over here by clicking on this eyeball icon over here so once again adding the text block over here or rather i'm going to give a horizontal box first and then add this text box to the horizontal box or rather i'm just going to scale this a bit over here scale it a bit more and then add another text block over here so this text block will be the longest distance covered and this text block over here will be total coins and then for this text block over here i'm just going to give it a bunch of zeros you're doing the same thing over here i'm going to create a new binding for these and i will change the name of these functions or these bindings to what they're supposed to do so in this case this binding over here is for total coins so i'm going to go to the graph view click on get text change the name to total coins similarly i'm going to go click on this text block over here create a binding for the text and change the name to longest distance now in the graph view i'm going to go to the even graph click on quit and under details click on the on click plus icon over here similarly for the retry the same thing the on click button event and in here we are simply going to copy what we have done over here so here we have the on click button event i'm just going to copy this thing and paste it over here for the retry i'm going to drag the execution pin and search for open level by name and then open the content browser and copy the name of the current level which is the infinite runner level and paste it over here and after that go over here and simply copy this section of blueprints over here and paste it connect the execution pin and yeah that's about it right i forgot go into the game over under designer i'm going to re-enable the border and again i forgot to mention this but make sure that the border over here is right below the canvas panel since the border is right below the canvas panel and all the other buttons are below the border you can actually interact with the buttons over here but if you put the border widget below the button widgets then you won't be able to interact with the buttons over here so once again save it and try running it and there you can see game over buttons are working if i click on retry it's working notice the player only dies once this time you can quit so there the game over blueprint widget is now working properly and that's about it in the next part of this video 
we are going to create the blueprints needed to save and load the longest distance and the total coins collected and then display that in the game over blueprint widget. So yeah, thanks for watching and see you later. Bye.